every time we gather around the dinner table, my, my dad would be at the head of the table. That was Victor's spot. You took his spot. You got your butt whooped. The rest of us kids would be huddled around the table like this, elbow to elbow, just sitting there listening to my dad tell us some of these stories. And oftentimes, right in the middle of these stories, he would tear up and he would go silent for these long periods of time. To me, as a kid, these moments felt like an eternity. And finally, he starts to stir his teaspoon a little bit and then he would continue to suffer. So you see why as a kid I never had a problem with believing in myself. I was raised in these stories of willpower, faith, and willingness to fight for it. And as a kid I thought, hey, if I wanted to do something cool with my life, all I had to do was just be willing to try. And so when I was 10 years old, I had this plan. I was going to become an author. Stories in my book, well, they were going to inspire people all over the world. But something happens to us from those days when we're those little kids with the big eyes and the big dreams to that day when nobody really knows when it happens, but suddenly we become adults, right? Little by little we get these things. Why is it that most people can tell you 30 of their favorite TV shows, but they can't tell you a title to single personal development? Why is it that most people can tell you all the stats to their favorite sports teams, but they don't know their own credit score? Why is it if we ever get a chance to meet somebody famous, we'll take a selfie with them, we'll post it online, we'll brag about it, but we'll never do anything or even try anything that, that might make us stand out and make a difference? Why is it that we continue to lift the skills and the dreams and the talents and the passions of people around us up on a pedestal and we continue to deny our own dreams? Our own skills, our own the key to leadership, um, people, loving people. That's what it comes down to, how much you care about your people, how much you care about the people, whether that's in your family, that's in your organization, but it's always about the people. Get to know your teams, get to know the people on a, on a, on a I mean, you can't become best friends with everybody in your organization, but get to, get to know them um, and, and spend time with them and see what their dreams are, what they're, because if you understand what their dreams are, what they're after, what, what they're, what they find purpose and meaning in, you can you can lead your organization exactly where you want it to, and, and in the most and in, in the best way possible. I read one of his books. It inspired me to change my entire way of thinking. So I was like, I need to find more content from this guy. I heard he was a speaker. And so I, I looked him up on YouTube for one of his second findings, and I found this old video of one of his last speeches. And I think he was about 90 years old in one of his last speeches. And I watched this video on YouTube. It was really bad quality, really bad audio, but I watched this man get up onto the stage with the help of his assistants and deliver the speech. Spoke right into my heart. And I remember thinking, how does somebody from that generation, from so long ago, somebody who's already passed away, how do they inspire a kid in our fast pace? And I thought, what if I could do that? If I could one day get up onto a stage with the help of some assistance, I could be if I'm lucky enough to live to 290 years old, 300 years old. And I deliver a speech, or I write a book, I create a piece of content, some kid, and who knows what the hell the world's going to look like in the future. They read it, it inspires them, it changes their life. I thought that would be a life of purpose. That would be a life of meaning. I thought I could do that. So on that day, I decided to revive some of those little 20-year-old dreams that I had of becoming an author. The scary part was that I also had to decide to become a speaker, too, because if Jim Rome and Ogden Dino were doing it, I was going to have to do it, too, even though I was deathly afraid of it. For us, that means we can't be double-minded. We've got to understand that nobody out there in this world already doing amazing things is somehow immune to fears, worries, anxieties, and, and obstacles. There are just people who learn how to take control of the story that they tell themselves, and they learn to, to point it, to guide it into one direction. They understand that being double-minded breeds hesitation. Hesitation is a killer of all dreams. Imagine being a leader who's questioning yourself at every single turn. Questioning yourself at every decision, every choice that you make. That's not going to work out well. If you as a leader walking through an office on a Monday morning, the first words out of your mouth are, it's another dreadful Monday and things aren't going well. And, and you're venting your fears and you're venting your frustrations. We're all guilty of it. But imagine how that starts to shape your office culture. It starts to bleed down around you. People start to pick up on that. It starts to become a, a self-fulfilling prophecy. What kind of story are you telling yourself today that's keeping you stuck? What kind of story, what, what kind of conversations are you having that are shaping your entire office culture by the way that you speak, by the way that you carry yourself? One of the most powerful things that you can do for yourself as an individual is to reflect on your progress and remember how far you've come. Anytime I find myself whining a little bit, getting a little bit impatient with the process, getting a little bit frustrated, I have to stop myself and look back on how far I've come. And looking back and seeing some of those times where I was really struggling, some of those times with a lot of confusion, always snaps me out of any tension that I may be throwing myself in. And so as a leader, never hesitate to share your journey, never hesitate to share your story with your team. When they see where you've come from, when they see why you do what you do, when they see what inspires you, what drives you to show up and give your best, don't demand it from them. Show them why you get inspired, why you show up every single day. They'll respect your journey and your story so much more than they'll ever respect that title that's on your back and you've done the opposite. I promise you. Sloths are sometimes known to, to fall to the depths out of trees because sometimes when we're crawling through the trees, they mistake 
their own hands for branches, and they let go and they fall into their death. <laughs> First time I heard that, I laughed so hard, I had to read it again. <laughs> I'm not even sure that's a real statistic or a real fact. But what a, what a perfect picture it is of people who, who have these blameless where the only way that they can save themselves is to, is, to, is to let go and be vulnerable for just a couple minutes and grab onto something else. And they continue falling. And I'm sure the, the fashionable slots are falling the harder they keep squeezing onto their hand. What a shame it is to be holding onto the very thing that's taking you down. Sure, life happens. It's going to happen to a lot of us. It's going to happen to all of us. Well, Jim Roman said, what happens, happens to us all, so then it's not... It's not what happens to you. It becomes, what are you going to do about it? But there was one guy in particular, that one of the band members, that showed up. I mean, this dude was going, actually. This guy was, he showed up in full costume. He was the only guy out of the band that showed up in full costume. He had his hair slicked back. He had his shirt sleeves rolled up, the, the, the baggy jeans and the, the shoes, everything. This guy was going for it. He's performing. This dude is running up and down the stage. He's the only one in the band that's sweating. Every time he's, when he's playing the guitar, he looks like he's about to... Uh, bite his tongue off because he's, you know, he's, he's, he's playing it hard and his, when he's seen it, his eyebrows look like they're about to float to the top of his head. I mean, this guy was going for it. And I remember I'm watching him and I look around and every eye in the bar is on this guy the entire night and he's, this guy's not even the lead singer of the band. And I caught myself thinking, what am I doing so well that people can't take their eyes off of me? And where can, and where can I pour much, that, that much of myself into? What are you doing so well that people can't take their eyes off of you? What are you willing to be so great at to the point where you might even start looking like a little bit of a weirdo because you're weird out so much. And so as leaders, we have to show empathy. As leaders, we have to be intentional about the way that we connect with people. As leaders, we have to be like a magnet. We have to be drawing people, constantly drawing people towards ourselves, no matter what their backgrounds are, no matter what their political views are, no matter what their religious views are, whatever, the, we, we, that's not up to us. We draw, we are a magnet. We draw people towards ourselves and we never let anyone get separated from the pack. When people get separated from the pack, that's when a lot of trouble starts to come. Be generous in your compliments and stingy with your criticism. Be quick to admire, slow to gossip. Always stick up for the lone gazelle. Never find yourself among the pack of hyenas. Celebrate people's wins, forget all about their losses. Ask about their dreams often. Speak about yours rarely. My friend, sometimes the world is going to punch you in the face, but this does not mean that there's something wrong with you. They just want you to quit. So don't ever give up and just keep going. When they say you're not smart enough, you don't have what it takes. Don't take the bait. Don't accept their offer to slow down and settle for mediocrity. That's just an opportunity for you to fight harder than you ever have before. So just keep growing. When that boy or that girl breaks your heart, tells you you're too short for them, you're allowed a good cry. But then wipe the tears and go find someone who's a few inches shorter than you, so just keep searching. When they tell you your invention ideas are stupid, just keep inventing, and soon they'll be talking about how they knew you in high school. You block out during a speech and you run away, gather the courage, come back, try again, and you never know, you just might be invited to get back on stage like this one. So just keep coming back. Inside of you right now are 700 muscles attached to 200 bones that just allowed you to stay there. You've got two gallons of life-given blood that pumps from 12,000 miles of blood vessels that run from your toes all the way to your fingertips by a heart that beats 35 million times per year. You've got three pounds of great brain, brain matter in your head that produces thoughts which can be measured on electromagnetic parts. Eyes that subconsciously detect emotion on another person's face allow you to feel what they feel and cry when you see them. 17 muscles in your face that allow you to smile. Every time you smile, you release healing and through your entire body. 10,000 taste buds in your tongue goes down into your throat, doesn't even choke you while you sleep. Lungs that expand to 20,000 breaths per day, keeping you alive without you ever needing to remind you to. See, my friends, you already are an extraordinary being. When are you going to start to live like that? You've already got everything inside of you to be an extraordinary leader. When are you going to start to lead like that?